So I've heard you talking. I've heard you on the Facebook groups and I've heard you in places like the gear pages and other gear places, other gear pages, I guess, asking about how to take this little gym, this guy right here, and uh, make it so it's much better suited for home use. Now the problem, and you may have seen this on another video, I think it was the one about EQs. I, I was talking about how you can use an EQ to make this, this amplifier, to make it a little better, make it easier to use at home and not quite so loud. So I'm going to show you how to make a volume box. Uh, and I've also noticed that this is sometimes incorrectly called an attenuator. It's not an attenuator. It's, you're basically just adding a master volume, okay? So it's really easy if you know how to solder. And if you don't know how to solder, you probably can figure it out just by building this thing. So let me show you how to do it real quick right now. So I found on the web, or the internet as I like to call it, a diagram from stinkfoot.se.archives. No, stinkfoot.se slash archives slash 2159. That's a diagram, pretty simple. It's one volume knob, goes from the input to the output. Yep, really easy. So I'll show you how to do it. First of all, we start with two mono jacks. Uh, you can tell they're mono because uh, basically there's just like one little tab here. This, this little portion here. It's just one of those little, those little tippies. And um, there's, that's, so that's basically on this, that's basically a ground and a positive. So this thing is like where the signal shouts flow from. If you look at this here, that's called your ring. That little tab is attached to the ring and might be hard to see in the video, but when you get your own jack, you'll see what I mean. So that's all attached right there. This little guy here is attached there. So that's our plus. That's our ground, okay? So we got that. We have, get out of here, Jax. We have this potentiometer. I'm going to use, ooh, that's the wrong one. I'm going to use a 100 uh, audio taper, 100K audio taper, I should say. And um, so you can see, see that little snippy on the side? That little doohickey sticking up? That's the technical term for it. We're actually going to break that off. So... I'm gonna get a different pot because I thought this was a 100K. So I'll do that first and I'll show you how to wire it up. Okay, so I did find an Audio Taper 100K and that's probably not focusing very well, but just trust me, it really is a 100 There you go. Got my little doohickey on the side, just gonna take a pair of pliers and really just kind of break it off like so because we're not gonna mess with that. Okay, that's step one. As you can see, the pot I found had uh, already had two wires on it. So I'm gonna add a third wire to it. I found a little wire, soldered the extra wire on there. I'm not gonna show you how to do that because you should probably know how. Basically, you're just heating up the tab and then you take a little bit of solder and just about like so. That's how you do it. Don't hold your soldering on there, iron on there too long or you'll damage the pot. And uh, it's pretty much that easy. So let's find us a box, like kabam, right? So we got this box here that came from somewhere. I'm just gonna repurpose it. So I'm gonna put my jacks here, probably my volume right there. And it's gonna be super easy. Life will be awesome. Here's a pro tip for you. If your box is small, make sure you don't put the lugs up too high where, where they will touch the bottom of the box because that will make it not work, right? Right. So we're gonna attach this bad boy. And let me show you why, why I got this right here. I'll show you what, what, what's really going on behind the scenes, okay? And I wanna tighten these too, but I'm pretty sure you don't need me to explain how to tighten a bolt with a wrench or a nut even. So, okay, so I'm looking at the 
pot here, okay? This guy, far left, that's gonna go to ground on the actual lug. So remember I was telling you how the ring with the little the little tab there with the, that's attached to the ring on the jack, that's our ground. So this volume here is gonna to attach to one of them. Now you can run a wire to both of them, but since that ring is actually touching the box itself, you don't have to, it'll still work. It's just kind of good practice, but you don't have to. So that goes to ground. The one on the far right is going to be your in. So let's uh, let's call this let's call this jack on the bottom. Let's call that in. Let's call this one right here. Let's call that out. And you may want to actually label this on your box. I'm going to go rogue and probably not label it just uh, you know to keep myself guessing. So this wire on the far right, on this far lug right there. That is going to attach to the input, that, that tab there. Remember the one that attaches to our little doohickey? It's going to attach to that lug. So not the ground lug, the other one. And then the middle wire is going to go onto the other jack on uh, the positive of that. So once again, not the ring. Not the part that's attached to the ring, not the ground, but the other lug that's attached to the doohickey, right? So middle wire is going to go there on the output jack, okay? So let's solder it up. All right then, let's start. So first, let's go with ground. So I find my ground lug on my input, and it could be output really, because it really doesn't matter that much. I'm going to simply slide it in there I know my good friend and fellow YouTuber is thinking, slide it in there. Ha <laughs> ha, there's all kinds of jokes I can make. But I'm not going to go there. That's all you, Henny. All right, so that's my ground. Heat this guy up for a minute. And then we'll put a little solder solder on him. We'll take our, la our blue wire, which is our number three lug. That's going to go on the input. So let's kind of bend the wire around a little bit, poke it through the hole. Second verse, same as the first. Hold your soldering iron on there. Apply, whoops, I didn't do a very good job. It keeps sliding on me. Okay, all right, soldered. Now, for the output, the middle lug of that volume pot is going to go on the signal, on the positive, so to speak. So, same there. I know it's very hard to see, but I'm just soldering, so just know that. Like, it's not rocket science. All right, and that's pretty much it. Now, like I said, I could take a wire and run it from my ground to this other ground, but since it's in this metal box and since the ring is basically attached to the box, that kind of makes the ground out of the whole thing, so it'll work just fine. So now we're going to make sure no wires are going to be in the way of the jack when it or the plug whenever it enters into there. Kind of try to make it look a little neat. Uh, make sure you label input and output, unless you're me, which you just go for it. And that's it. So from there, we're going to put the lid on. We're going to put fancy knob on top of it, and that's going to be our volume. Bam, just like that. Just just like that. Put screws into it. And I got to adjust that. There we go. Just like that. Oh yeah. Look at that. So be all the way, let's see. All the way down, all the way up. 
That's our master volume. Let's see how it works. All right, playing through the Hot Rod Deluxe. Uh, my clean tone without anything, like any sort of passive volume or, you know, the thing we just built, not in there yet. So right now my clean tone is this. Now, as most people know, at least uh, those familiar with these amps, this little volume knobby is very sensitive, very sensitive. Most people complain that you can't get it up above two when you're at home, and uh, it's just not a whole lot of variance between one and two. So we're gonna fix that. And we fix that by adding the box from the power, from the preamp out, we'll call that the effects uh, send. Power amp in, we'll call that the effects return. So let's plug it up. All right, so here's my box. Uh, ignore all the writing and all that stuff because this was used as something else. So that bottom jack, that's going to be where the, the preamp out goes into that one. Okay, that's like our input. Then the output goes into the power amp in. So we're just going to hook that up with a couple of uh, little cables. Okay, obviously you can use longer cables if you want. In. Right like that. Okay, I'll just put the volume about halfway, just just for testing purposes, right? Much lower, isn't it? I could turn it up all the way. the volume all the way up, right? So let's say I'm just trying to find that sweet spot. I could turn this down. In fact, I can turn the amp volume all the way up and use this as my master volume. So we got a little bit of gain going on because we're driving the preamp a bunch and I forget the exact circuit of these amps. I might actually be clipping some op amp in there too because I think the, believe the effects loop is actually op amp driven. So if we want to clean tones, just back that off. Even if you want just a little bit of grit, then just control your overall volume with that. even all right so that's basically how you do it I mean you can uh, use this as your use this box as your master volume and now you have a lot more flexibility on uh, home use or even stage use or church use or wherever you like to use the fantastic amazing fender hot rod deluxe I wouldn't go that far but it's a cool amp right right and that's how you do it. Pretty simple, huh? It really is pretty simple. Another thing you can use if you do not want to mess with soldering or anything like that, just take uh, take one of these guys. I'm getting better light here. It's like sucks. Take one of these guys. It's just a passive volume pedal. And uh, it's actually pretty much the same thing as that. So it's just on a... On a little treadle dilly, on a gas pedal. This is, I like to use this as my gas pedal on my pedal board. So, just gives me fun stuff to do. But you really can. If you don't want to solder, you can get one of these. Um, you probably can buy them on eBay as well. 
I don't know how much they are, probably like 20 bucks or 25 bucks. I think Electro Harmonics makes one with a switch so you can turn it on or off, which might be handy. And uh, there's other tricks you could do to, to, do to it too. So let's say your amplifier is really dark. You can add a small capacitor, like a 100 picofarad, between lugs two and three. I know what you're saying. You're like, Brian, I have no idea what lugs two and three are. So you're in luck. I'm going to show you. All right, so here's the potentiometer. This is three. Middle is two. First one is one. So one, two, three. So if you put a small capacitor between here, just one leg here, one leg over there, just like that. Like, uh, try 100 picofarad. That'll make it brighter. Yes, it will. And also, another thing you can do, uh, I guess you can, I mean, you can add other controls, like tone controls and such like that. Uh, kind of the context of what I'm going to do on this video, but it can be done. And you can make like a faux presence control even. So... It can be done, oh my friend. Yes, my friend, it can be done. I hope that helped you, and I hoped you, uh, you know, had a little bit of fun soldering some stuff, because it is fun soldering stuff, isn't it? It really is, I like it. It's a good pastime. All right, I appreciate you guys watching this. If you have any comments or questions, please leave them below. Uh, you're probably either watching this on YouTube or Facebook. Uh, if you're watching on Facebook, you can actually just tag me into it. It's Brian at Wampler Pedals. Uh, it'd be my Facebook profile. And on YouTube, just comment, and I try to reply back unless you're trolling me, and then I just don't respond at all because I think that's stupid. All right, thanks. See you next week.